Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today, I'm going to be listening to Dimash Kudaibergen partner up with Tangri for the first time, and they'll be performing Swan Goose. This is from a live performance at the Spring Festival Gala in 2019. Now, there weren't any English subtitles available for this video, so I did check out the lyrics ahead of time, and uh, it talks a lot about a swan goose. I don't know what a swan goose is. Uh, I would think that it would be either a swan or a goose, but apparently these are put together. Uh, and it has a lot of themes of travel and homeland. So I got the impression that maybe we would have probably some sort of longing element for the homeland, but maybe something that feels like flight at the same time. So I'll be looking for both of those during this performance. Let's get to it. Before we get too far into this, let's talk about this intro. Um, this, uh, I don't think, I think that the guy at the top, I see Dimash in the picture and it looks like a guy at the top. I don't know if that was Tangri that was singing or not yet. Um, the first guy that was singing uh, was using overtones. Um, I know that Tangri is Mongolian, Chinese Mongolian. And, uh, and I would expect to maybe hear a little bit of Mongolian throat singing in here, but usually I associate Mongolian throat singing as being something much lower. Um, but some people do talk about overtone singing as being a part of Mongolian throat singing too. So you could call it that. Um, basically he's, he's droning on one note and you can hear the overtones up above it. Usually when you're using some sort of overtone singing, you'll catch the first overtone uh, first and that's like an octave right above and then the rest of the overtones tend to follow in like a fifth and then an octave and I think it's like a third and then another fifth so anyhow they go up uh, that often will sound a little bit like amazing grace because it uses those same pitches um it was really cool to hear him here because he's got a ton of control of those overtones he's very very purposeful with them so that you hear the overtone actually stronger than you do hear that droning pitch uh, the instruments are really curious to me. I At first I thought it was an arhu because it's got two strings, but it is not an arhu. I don't think it is. It looks like a combination of like a violin or viola and arhu because the body of uh, the instrument looks a little bit bigger. But then there's also something that looks like it's almost the size of a bass, but also two instruments. I'm guessing these are Mongolian folk instruments, not sure. Thought it was really cool though when they went into this sort of more upbeat almost pop feeling with instruments i wonder if they're gonna mold those two together i want to hear this intro one more time guys so we're gonna go back very loud overtones. This is awesome. <laughs> There's something totally different now. Oh, 
原上，今生有无伤。Hmm. Ah, uh, before it looks like Dimash is getting ready to sing here. Ah,、uh, before he does, ah,、uh, I this I think is Tangri. I think this is. So I'm not sure who the first guy was. Um, but Tangri, ah,、uh, his voice is so elegant. It's ah,、uh, it's got some some ah、uh, what I would call like traditional Chinese music stylization in it. Um, it, he's able to sing a、uh, some more nasal notes, but. Not not as much as you would find in in Chinese opera.、Uh, it's just got a little bit of stylization to it, and it's really、ah, it's kind of peppered in there. Mostly though, it's just really smooth, very precise, and it it feels almost like Mozart in its elegance. It's beautiful,、uh, really gorgeous and expressive sound. Let's keep going. <laughs> Comment.、Uh, this is such a cool、uh, transition that's happening right now with the instruments.、Uh, I I was really intrigued by hearing Dimash's voices after Tangri's. Dimash's sounded、um, more deep and full, and it sounded、um, it sounded like it had more Western classical training in it. It was really really fascinating to hear the two beside each other because both had so much control and beautiful legato expression and elegance as well. But it just had this、uh, a lovely complementary tones to each other. So hopefully we'll hear them together. Let's go back. This this instrument this instrumental interlude is fun. <laughs> Tangri to be on the top part and Dimash to be below because Dimash's voice sounds like it has a little bit more depth in it, but they did the opposite, and that makes me wonder if they're gonna flip in a bit. This is just a hunch. I might be totally wrong. Also, I hear tons of drums in the sound right now, but I don't see the drum kit anywhere. I wish I knew where that drum kit was. <laughs> Go back. I wasn't sure if that was done with the section or not.、Um, I really enjoyed.、Uh, Dimash was doing like a sort of yodeling thing, where he was going in and out of essentially his full voice and then flipping it a little bit,、um, pushing against that break. It was really cool. I've heard him do that a little bit when he's done some,、uh, it's like more like Kazakh、uh, styling. I will call it some ornamentation from Kazakhstan. Uh, usually, he, like he added a little bit of that in the middle of "Hello," where he played with a different、uh, styling and adding some more ethnic qualities to it. It's one of the things that I really, really enjoy about his performances is the way that he'll mix that styling in.、Uh, also, it was really fun to hear him control that vibrato on his long belted note. Right, held it straight, then gave it a lot more vibrato, and he even used a diphthong cutoff at the end. 
which was, it gave it a nice little extra bite. Let's catch that just a little bit more before we go on. cool duet section. Most of it had Dimash in his falsetto sitting on top. Uh, I really liked um, sort of these calls that Tangri, he did these sort of like hollering effects that he had. Uh, and I, I have heard some of that in Chinese traditional music as well, but it, sound, it sounded a little bit different there. So I wonder if there's a little bit of like traditional Mongolian music that was mixed in too. Uh, it was really fun to hear that with this like beautiful floaty line on top. It's a very, very interesting mix. about that guys I didn't catch it before I moved on to the ad at the end uh, but back still talking about the ending of this song uh, I was really really loving the way that they were moving in parallel octaves so that was why it sounded like so heavy with melody there at the end very reinforced Tangri was on the bottom Dimash was on top they never switched I really 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 wanted them to switch places they never did switch vocal places I mean uh, but Ah, uh, oh well, I'll, I'll live with that dream for another day. And I really, really did enjoy the octaves apart that strengthened the melody. And then at the end, their voices came together and were unison on the same note. It was a really lovely feeling of homecoming, which I think probably tied into the lyrics. Definitely listening to their various lines, uh, it sounded like a lot of soaring was happening. And I... Later on, I, I realized I think the travel is in the instrumentation, the way that they're running really fast. Um, let's listen to that end part one more time. Also, I love the like interspersed overtones that are there. That's super cool. That guy is amazing. And uh, I want to listen to this end part one more time just to check out those harmonies of octaves and then coming back to unison. There's your, your octaves. Very nice to know. Beautiful, beautiful blend. That video jumps to ads really quickly at the end. Sorry about that. Didn't catch it one more time. I loved hearing these two 
at the end. I That unison, again, they blend voices really nicely there. It's a beautiful sound together. And then it's really fun to have this overtone um, singing that's interspersed on top. It's such a different texture. So it, it feels almost like it's just hitting a different frequency from the other voices. Love that. Also, uh, I just looked up Swan Goose and apparently it's a certain kind of bird that is native to Mongolia area and it migrates too. So it's not, it's like not a swan or a goose, but it's a swan goose, which is just one bird. I should have looked that up before time, thought I would relate it now at the end of the video. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me on that, uh, that rabbit hole. Guys, thank you so much for this recommendation. It was such a cool piece with so many different acts in it. And I loved hearing different, uh, different instruments pulled in and different sounds pulled in. It was a great conglomeration of many, many styles. So that was super fun to listen to. And I hope that you'll keep making recommendations down below. Also, please come and join me in live chat on Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Arizona time. And if you want to learn more about how to sing, check out my online course, Demystifying Singing, that's now open. You can find that on my website. I hope to see you soon.